the following. All right. Thank you for coming, everyone. Uh, my name is Tor Manson, and this is Painless Tech for Business on Premises and Online Connectivity to the PSTN and PBXs. I'm a Microsoft Certified Solutions Master in Communication, uh, which is a level of uh, certification above MCSE that used to exist but sadly no longer does. Uh, also dabble periodically in networks and security. Uh, those of you who are from Vancouver area and are interested, I run the local users group. We meet about four or five times a year, uh, meetup.com slash bcucug. And on the right-hand side, under Mr. Quackers, uh, all of my details for connectivity uh, for my blog, Twitter, and my email address. I do answer emails. And I'll have those up at the end of the show, too, if you wanted to get them then. So today, we'll give a quick overview of Skype for Business, uh, particularly around the enterprise voice connectivity area. We'll talk about the three models for deploying Skype for Business. Uh, connectivity of those models to the PSTN or a PBX. And we'll talk about looking, leaping, and some lessons learned. All right, we kind of did this in the, in the pre-show, so we'll just kind of breeze through it. We've got a good mix of people here who uh, are using Skype, some who are using small versions of Flink. Um, and a reminder, tweet with the hashtag MVP hour to be entered into the MVP day straw. All right, so what is SFB? Uh, SFB is Microsoft Skype for Business, which is a mouthful, and it also takes up a lot of real estate on the slide. So I've abbreviated it to SFB when I'm writing. When I'm talking, uh, I may sometimes say Skype, so that we're all clear I'm not talking about the consumer Skype. I'm talking Skype for Business. I just don't want to say Skype for Business 20 million times. So Skype for Business mm. is instant messaging and presence it's video and web conferencing, and it's full enterprise telephony in one integrated app. So what is enterprise telephony? These are the voice features of your IPPBX or your UC solution uh, that give you your, your business phone services. Um, so connecting to the PSTN so your customers can call you, so you can call other people uh, within your organization as well. Uh, and including talking to an older PBX that might not have SIP capabilities, so connecting through a gateway, or to a newer um, PBX that has SIP capabilities. So the focus of my talk today is really on that connectivity to the PSTN and PBXs. So there are three models for deploying Skype for Business on premises. So all of your infrastructure is within your own building, online, hosted by Microsoft, and a hybrid of the two. On-premises Skype is uh, fading away, particularly for smaller businesses uh, outside of Canada where Microsoft has more services available at the moment. Uh, on-premises is where we see gateways to connect to PRIs and session border controllers for connecting to SIP trunks to provide access um, to either the PSTN or your PBXs. And uh, saw this on the, uh, the Twitter stream for, for Skype. A couple of the guys were having a, a bit of an argument back and forth on whether it's on-premises or on-premise. It's premises. Uh, or you can just say on-prem and don't worry about it. So the second model that's starting to become really popular uh, is cloud hosted by Microsoft. They've got two levels of functionality. There's PSTN conferencing, which takes your dial-in conferencing and allows people globally to dial into your meetings. The other option is PSTN calling, where Microsoft becomes your, uh, your phone company. There is a third option called ACP or audio conferencing provider uh, and it's kind of fading away because this was taking third-party providers and hooking them up to the Microsoft Cloud. And with Microsoft PSTN conferencing, they're just not really needed that much anymore. 
Uh, we see them because people already have contracts with them, because they can get a better rate or uh, coverage in certain countries where Microsoft might not have it. So Cloud PBX with PSTN calling is another great mouthful. And uh, so this is your users are in the cloud, they're getting a telephony service from Microsoft. It's not yet at feature parity with the on-prem deployment. Uh, response groups, for example, on-prem are just coming out in a slightly different form called call queues, which is in preview right now and should be out soon. Uh, Common area phones are, you know, the phone that's over here in the corner that's not assigned to a person, it's assigned to a room. And more likely than not, you want to have it locked down um, and set up differently than a phone that's assigned to one of your executive assistants, for example. I probably can't wander over to that phone and call long distance, but my staff might very well need to call long distance. That functionality isn't yet available in in the cloud. If you want a common area phone, you have to set it up as a user, and the, the ability to lock that down as to who they can call isn't quite there yet. You can't prevent them from calling long distance, uh, and that's about the only restriction. Uh, call Park, everyone's been in a, in a Safeway meet department line 201. That someone has answered the call and they've parked it in an orbit, and then you page for someone to uh, dial in that 201 code to retrieve that call and talk to that person. Mm -hmm. Not available in the cloud if that's anything that you do use. Uh, analog phones. Analog phones, uh, definitely not a lot of support for in the Skype for Business world. Um, mainly because they're, they're not a Skype client, they'll never have a presence indicator on them. They'll, they'll never be able to IM. Uh, usually what you do with an analog phone is you connect it to a gateway and just write the calls. So it's and supporting ATA, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so an ATA for one line or a, a gateway from uh, audio codes is the most popular with their media pack line, two, four, eight, 24 ports, uh, and even bigger. Uh, E911 uh, is a very static setup from the cloud. Whereas your on prem deployment, you can get very granular in reporting your, your location to emergency services. So a hybrid environment is getting pretty popular because it allows you to get the best of both worlds for your on-prem users and your on-cloud users. You take, uh, there's two different approaches you can take to a hybrid environment. One is having a full on-prem deployment of Skype for Business. The other is something <coughs> new called Cloud Connect Connector Edition, or CCE. And Microsoft came out with this to respond to people who are saying, you know, I don't want to set up an entire Skype for Business infrastructure to have my cloud users able to access my TELUS PRIs or my ThinkTel SIP trunk. And guys, you need to give us something that, that's stripped down, that's smaller, that's simpler, so we can uh, take better advantage of these services. So if you have a full Skype for Business infrastructure that you're in a um, hybrid scenario with the cloud, uh, your cloud users access the PSTN and the PBX through your on-prem infrastructure, not through Microsoft. You need to fully license your on-prem infrastructure regardless of to what degree you're using it. Uh, so if you, if you do set it up to provide phone calls, you still need to fully license it. Uh, again, still some challenges around the feature parity if your user is homed in the cloud. They get the cloud features if they're homed on-prem, then they get the on-prem features. Sorry, about LCR, LCR is least cost routing. Second. Least cost routing. So if I have a wide area network and I'm sitting here in Vancouver and I want to call the UK, I'll send that call across my network to the UK and then out to the PSTN there versus placing a long distance call. So hybrid with cloud connector edition uh, is pretty cool. You don't need licenses for the Skype components that are in cloud connector edition. You do still need to license uh, your hypervisor and your Windows guest OSs, so there's still that cost. And you do need some hardware underneath it. Uh, it's only Hyper-V at this point. Uh, and again, even with the cloud connector edition, 
you're still, um, if your users are in the cloud, they get the cloud feature sets, not the on-prem feature sets. And with Cloud Connector Edition, you can't move a user on-prem to get them that additional functionality. The requirements for CCE, uh, you need Azure AD Connect with Directory Sync. You need three public IP addresses. The cloud needs to talk to this infrastructure. You need an internet connection at the site that you're setting this up in, uh, or you need Express Route into your organization, and you also need an SSL cert. Missing from Cloud Connect Edition. I apologize for the iChart. Uh, 365.blog is where I pulled this list from. Uh, they keep it relatively up to date and, and cross features off as, as those features are implemented or something similar that does the same need is implemented. Um, one of the, the challenges in moving to the cloud is that uh, that feature and functionality list. So when you get Cloud Connector Edition from Microsoft, it comes in two capacities, one for 50 users, one for about 500 users. If you need 700 calls, then you would deploy two Cloud Connector Edition um, deployments. You can deploy up to four. You'll have three active and one passive, so that'll get you um, 1,500 calls. If you need still more calls, you can deploy multiple sites but there's a maximum of four uh, CCEs in any given site. Cloud Connector Edition lives inside your DMZ, not on your LAN. The four servers that are deployed are a domain controller that also runs the certificate authority for internal certificates within the, the CCIE, CCIE, CCE VMs, uh, and to provide the Active Directory prereqs that these other servers need. There is a script down Skype for Business Server in there, and one of the prereqs for Skype for Business Server is Active Directory. It is not your Active Directory. There's no federation or anything like that to your uh, internal Active Directory, so there's no security risk here. It's just locked up in that CCE box to provide some prerequisites. You'll have uh, an edge server in your Cloud Connector Edition that allows your infrastructure to talk out to Microsoft. You'll have a mediation server that lets you talk out to the PSTN or your PBX. And then you'll have a stripped-down Skype server running the central management server. Bandwidth and express route. One of the interesting things about the cloud is you need upstream bandwidth to be able to get to the cloud. If you uh, set up a meeting for 10 users, within your office and a few external users and someone in your office is presenting, their, their presentation needs upstream bandwidth. If they're actively talking on the call, they need upstream bandwidth. So check your internet connection. If you're asymmetric and you know, you're 100 down and 10 up, that 10 up needs to be uh, bumped up because it might not be enough to handle video, PowerPoint presentations, phone calls, especially with everything else that's going on in your office. Express route uh, is a wide area connection available from Microsoft that hooks you into their cloud. It gets you all the features of a wide area network, specifically quality of service and, and with reservations. So you can say, hey, my Skype for Business voice traffic gets more priority than my email traffic, for example. So some cool things about Cloud Connector Edition from partners, you don't have to just deploy the, the Microsoft VMs with this 50 and, and 500 limit. Uh, Audio Codes and Sonus bundle Cloud Connector Edition with their gateways that have a server module that slides into the gateways. And everything then is run from within their box, support is from them, updates are from them. So if you've got a remote office and you don't want to go set up a, a server running Hyper-V to run Cloud Connector Edition, this is a really great option. Specifically, if you've already got a gateway there to connect to PRIs for PSTN connectivity. Uh, I talked in the pre-show about something that ThinkTel is doing. They will host CCE in their data centers. They have Express Route into the cloud, and they'll provide SIP trunk services to that CCE instance. So within Canada right now, you can call up ThinkTel, and you can be up and running rather quickly with uh, full PSTN access for cloud users. 
Microsoft does not yet have PSTN calling in Canada. Uh, I don't have any really great information on when that's going to be available, but they're working on it as quickly as they can uh, to get that available. So uh, that's unfortunate. If you do happen to have users, though, in Canada, uh, ThinkTel is a great option, or Cloud Connector addition to PRIs or another SIP trunk provider. Uh, and when Microsoft does come out with Cloud PBX with PSCN calling in Canada, it's probably unlikely that they'll have um, a point of presence and be able to provide you DIDs in Burns Lake. So your choices there are Prince George, three hour drive away, and why wouldn't we want phone numbers from there, or a Cloud Connector edition uh, locally to Burns Lake connected to PSCN. So looking, leaping, and lesson learned. You can mostly mix and match your uh, users when you're in a hybrid scenario. You can have some users uh, on-prem. You can have other users in the cloud. You can have those cloud users have uh, PSTN calling. Or you can have them use the on-prem infrastructure to call out to the uh, PSTN or your PBX. You cannot have your on-prem users access cloud services for calling out. If you want the cloud services for PSTN calling, you need to move the user to the cloud. So something that I see a lot of is an organization in their head office will set up a Skype for Business pool for all of their conferencing and phone calls within the office. And then all of the users who are remote or maybe some small sales offices, they'll put those users up in the cloud. And this helps deal with that problem that I talked about earlier, where all the people in your office are consuming all of your upstream bandwidth because everything stays local on the LAN. You have QoS there. So um, it's, it's becoming more and more common to see people do that versus having uh, a remote user or a small office connect back into your head office. So look before you leap. When you're in a hybrid configuration, it's really difficult to change from hybrid with a full on-prem infrastructure to hybrid with Cloud Connector Edition. Uh, it's even tougher to switch um, the other way around. So if you're a cloud only, carefully consider whether you want to do Cloud Connector Edition and not have all of the costs of the on-prem infrastructure, or whether at some point you're going to want on-prem infrastructure for some feature set that's not available in the cloud solution. Cloud PBX with PSTN calling, you can port your existing phone numbers to Microsoft uh, to use in the cloud. Check though if Microsoft has an agreement in all of the procedures set up with your current carrier to be able to do that. Uh, this isn't yet available in, in Canada, so there are no agreements set up with any of the carriers. If you're with a, a smaller alternate carrier, it, it might not be there you might need to port away from that smaller carrier to a larger carrier and then port into Microsoft, um, which gets really interesting, uh, especially when you're trying to convince that larger carrier to help you out by porting your numbers in only for you to port them away and, and use someone else for services. Uh, you always have the option for brand new phone numbers uh, and you can set up call forwarding from the other numbers to the new numbers or something like that if you are well and truly stuck. Uh, and like with my example of Burns Lake, make sure Microsoft has a point of presence uh, in the area if you're looking at PSTN calling so that you can get local numbers. So if you've already leapt and changed your mind, uh, if you have the full on-prem infrastructure and you want to move to CCE, the very first thing you need to do is move all of your users to the cloud because you can't have users homed on CCE. It's just a connector for your PSTN. So you would move all your users online, uh, get them set up there nice and happy. They would consume their PSTN connection back through your, your on-prem equipment. Uh, you, you then tear out the on-prem deployment and deploy Cloud Connector over a weekend or over a long weekend. So it's going to be a big bang. This is a, a switch that you'll probably want to lab up. Um, go get a temporary tenant from Microsoft 
get some Hyper-V VMs spun up and just walk through this process to make sure you've got it right because there's no way to stop and you know, <coughs> redeploy your on-prem Skype if you get to Saturday night and things aren't looking well. Coming the other way, if you've got Cloud Connector Edition deployed and you want to move to hybrid, uh, is a little simpler because you can yank out the, uh, the CCE and deploy just a bare bones Skype infrastructure just to get those calls flowing. Then you can work on building out the rest of your Skype infrastructure over time and move your users to it. I would also have this one up. Um, just because you are, you know, there's, there's really no good rollback plan or no intermediate step that you can get to where you can stop and, and take a breather. You've got to push through this. Um, Virtual machines and Office 365 access is, uh, is inexpensive compared to an outage lasting into a Monday or a Tuesday or, or longer because you ran into something unexpected. So the woe of analog. There is no analog in the cloud. So you're going to need a, a gateway to connect your analog devices to. That uh, gateway will need to talk to your CCE or your on-prem uh, infrastructure. There is no real analog functionality in Skype for Business of any flavor. You'll see uh, a CS analog device. And really, that's just a shortcut to get that phone number for that analog phone into the contact list uh, and to do some, some routing shortcuts. Because the only spot that phone can be is attached to that gateway. So it, it shorts uh, the longer routing process that's in Skype and it delivers the call straight to that gateway. That's all there is for analog support. When you think about it, really, just a uh, 999 VTAC phone from London Drugs, that's all they do anyway. My recommendation is have a look at your analogs, find out what you've actually got, find out what these people are doing with them, get rid of them if you can. Uh, if you've got paging systems or enter phones, you might not be able to easily get rid of those uh, analog devices. Okay, so you'll have to have a gateway to keep those. Uh, if you've got a simple buzzer for a gate or something like that, there's SIP devices that will work nicely with gateways. Uh, there is nothing yet that I've seen that is Skype for Business compliant. There's not a lot of reason to set up a, a Skype for Business client on a gate at the end of the driveway kind of thing. Uh, faxes. This is a, a coworker of mine who was fighting valiantly for 10 days, getting a, a large collection of analog faxes working, because the fax needs to talk to the, the media pack gateway, and then it talks to a session border controller, and then out to Verizon. And we discovered that when Verizon provides uh, fax over SIP trunks in the Western US, it's a different setup than the Eastern US. Uh, and Adam spent an awful lot of time working on this. Uh, a far easier solution for this organization might have been talking to the end users, hey, what are you guys still using faxes for? It's 2017. Oh, we send and receive large purchase orders. Great, but your fax machine is an MFP, so can we scan an email? Can the other people scan an email? Can we get rid of these analog lines or reduce the number of analog lines that we have? Uh, and in fact, this organization pulled some records on some other fax machines and found that one hadn't been used for eight months. So preparing to jump, there's some things you can do before you go ahead and uh, deploy in a hybrid infrastructure. Uh, the first, and this is something that I recommend for all Skype deployments, is start transitioning away from the concept of extensions. There is no support for extensions in the cloud. Uh, you, can, you can budget with an on-prem deployment, but there, there are no options in the cloud for it. The cloud, your only option would be to set up uh, a dial plan so that when the user dials uh, 1234, Skype goes, OK, you meant to dial 604, 555, 1234. Uh, so it's more of a short code or a speed dial than a true extension. Uh, clean up your dial plans and move to the 164 format in your Skype environment. If you've put in plus 1234 as someone in line URI in Skype, you're going to want to fix that and get a, a proper line URI in there. Uh, and get rid of analog. 
So why do I want you to clean up and uh, put in proper E-164? So consider this phone number. It looks like a local Vancouver number, right? But it's actually the phone number for the Four Points by Sheraton in Penang, Malaysia. <laughs> but it is also a Shaw landline in Langley. Same number, two different locations on the globe. My mouse doesn't. There we go. So plus six zero at the start of that phone number indicates that this is a globally unique phone number and belongs to Malaysia. Plus six zero is our country code. Plus one is our country code. So plus one, six oh four indicates that's a British Columbia phone number. You can't not do this in the cloud. Microsoft is, is routing your calls globally. You have to have them in this format. So if you're going to be placing calls back and forth to users who are in the cloud, to other users who are in your on-prem environment, you're going to have to have this format um, or people just won't be able to place calls back and forth via phone number. So some other guidance. The two hybrid deployment scenarios can't exist at once. You can't have on-prem infrastructure and deploy a CCE. Uh, there's some conversation uh, on Twitter that Microsoft is looking at supporting this uh, to help in those two migration scenarios that I talked about of moving back and forth between them. Uh, Cloud PBX with PSTN calling may not have numbers everywhere your, your users need them. Burns Lake, talk to your users, find out what they need. Is it a bad thing if a user in Burns Lake has a Prince George phone number? It might very well be if you've got people local in Burns Lake who need to call that user an awful lot. Uh, if they're a sales guy whose territory is all of Western Canada, uh, well, he should move from Burns Lake. Um, but it won't so much matter if you're in Edmonton, you don't care if you're calling Burns Lake or a Prince George number. Uh, and plan your bandwidth usage uh, very carefully, especially upstream. Voicemail. Exchange UM is the voicemail component that's used for on-prem users. And when I say Exchange UM, I mean not only the Exchange inbox, but also the unified messaging component of Exchange that will do the, uh, the answering of your call, the recording of it, and then deposit it into your inbox. Microsoft had a look at this and thought that it was a, a bit big to have a requirement for Exchange and using the Exchange UM functionality is an enterprise cow for Exchange. So wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to get voicemail access that was less expensive? And they wrote something called Azure Voicemail. And this is for cloud-based users. It does the call answering, the um, recording of your call and drops it into your inbox. Still goes into your Exchange inbox, it's just the, a different mechanism under the hood. Uh, the beautiful thing about this is it's automatically set up or almost automatically set up for you in its entirety uh, when you create users and enable them online when they are licensed for it. The latest trend that we're seeing that's quite interesting is don't give users voicemail, uh, especially in a UC world where you can see their status. You say, oh, Torn's away. Well, why am I going to bother calling him to talk about this issue? I'll just send him the email that I've got that's up in front of me or they'll find me on my cell phone, or they'll tag me for status change alerts, wait until I'm available again, and then call me. Cloud PBX with PSTN calling is currently available in the US, UK, France, Spain, and Puerto Rico, not yet in Canada, coming soon. It's in preview in some other countries. PSTN conferencing, the ability to have a conference number that everyone can phone into um, to listen to your conference, is in hundreds of countries um, and check support.office.com for that list. Uh, if there's a place you're doing business, then you can probably get a number in the country. Maybe not the specific city, but definitely in the country. And that's the end of the uh, presentation. If anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Yes. Sorry, I didn't uh, command something. Um, did you sort of this strategy to things like uh, 
it's called Line 2 that's available for the iPhones, for example, where you can sort of uh, have multiple phone lines for your cell phone. But it's, it's kind of got a cloud back into it. So if I have the Skype client on my phone, I can use that to attach my phone number and yes. also have a separate uh, mobile number associated with the phone. Absolutely, yeah. Can those two be integrated? The, the, the cell phone, phone number from Telus Rogers, whatever, yeah, exactly. and everything. The integrated system. into the mobile number. I think we have three questions. So they're, they're somewhat integrated. Your experience <coughs> on an Android phone will be two different apps. On an iOS, they're integrated um, so that when you get a Skype for Business call on your phone, it looks just like a regular call coming in, uh, except it says Skype for Business, so you know that it's a Skype for Business call. So all of your functions work just as if it was your call to your, to your Telus number. So the capability is definitely there. Uh, the nice part about it is you can log out of Skype for Business and not have the business number on your phone for when you go on vacation, but still have your personal number on your mobile, for example. <coughs> Any other questions? Um, so, in terms of deployment and strategy, so I'll give you a bit of background. So, where we're heading is we're, we're heading to have basically our exchange. It will be set up in a hybrid, but eventually it's going to be probably mostly Office 365 for our exchange, all our exchange is going to be. So what in that situation is the best, say, Skype for Business deployment that you would think? Would it be the cloud deployment, or would it have to be the cloud deployment at that point? So your question is, you're moving to exchange online. Does that impact your choices of what you would do for Skype for Business? Yes. It does not. You can do anything you want with your Skype for Business deployment, and you'll be able to drop your voicemails into your exchange. And vice versa as well, as you've got Exchange on-prem, you can have Skype on-prem, online, hybrid. It doesn't matter. It'll, it'll find it as long as you set up with those prerequisites about the, uh, the Azure AD Connect and the Dursync. Yeah. That, that's really the magic that hooks everything up together. Okay. Right. Any other questions from anyone? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So if your users have extensions now, there, there's really kind of two parts to this question. One is, do they have a true extension off of the, the main number? Or is their extension really just a shorter form of their DID? If their extension is just a shorter form of their DID, then you, you've got a DID. You can keep that with the user, move them to the cloud. If they don't have their own DID and their extension is a true extension off of a main number, then you will need to get a new DID for those users. And then are those, when they do purchase uh, DIDs, is that in Microsoft or is it through another provider? It's through Microsoft, yes. It's, it's included as part of the, uh, the PSN call license. And it's going on their portal and, and you can pick uh, from a group of phone numbers and how many numbers you want. Yeah, it's it's. I, I've mentioned a, a couple of times through the presentation. Talk to your users, understand what they're doing, uh, what their concerns are, and let them know about the changes ahead of time. So in your scenario where the users are, are losing their extension and gaining the DID, they're going to want to know, well, OK, I'm used to dialing four digits to reach Bob. How do I not reach Bob in Skype? And this, this is for any Skype deployment. 
So you need to educate the user about, oh, hey, you're going to have this contact list. You can type Bob into it if Bob's not on your contact list. Right click and dial in from there. You can type Bob into your phone on the keypad by spelling his name out. And on the screen, it'll, it'll automatically you know, pick up and talk to Bob. So the concept of, of numbers kind of starts to go away. But definitely important to, to talk to your users ahead of time. Um, there, there's nothing you can do about the situation, but not surprising them and letting them know ahead of time is the best way to, to not have upset users. Any other questions? Awesome. No, we're good. Thank you. All right. Thank you.